Tampa Bay Lightning, New York Islanders. We've got your Game 6 summary coming up. Paul, well, another great game here tonight. Um, just before we get into it, I uh, need to start off just by uh, saying that our, our channel's been blowing up today. Um, really thrilled to see the number of views. Uh, I think uh, we just passed 2,500 views today. A couple days ago, we were at two views per day. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this is the ninth day of the channel being around, and we're, we're just seeing lots of views. Uh, 33 subscribers now. Uh, shout out to all, too many to name them individually, but uh, shout out to everybody who's just subscribed today. Thank you very much. Great to have you with the channel. Um, and, uh, you know, wonderful to see all the views and appreciate all, all the, uh, the viewership and uh, all those watching uh, and staying on the channel for the, the longer you stay on for each uh, video, the, the more YouTube likes it. Really appreciate that. Speaking of that, if you watch right to the end of this video, Paul and I are going to give you your the predictions for the puck, official puck dude predictions for game seven of the series. So watch right to the end of the video. And I wonder where you can, okay, let's get you into can it. imagine where I'm going. Do you think where I, do you know where I'm <laughs> no going idea, with that, Adrian? No idea at all. See, well, I, before I was, we get uh, to that, chirp, let's... chirped by a few people today uh, about <laughs> not having, uh, you know, having my head in in inappropriate places, and that uh, Tampa Bay was too good. But remember what I said: ain't nothing. I also be better, and I said this one was going seven. And guess what, folks? Going seven. Anyway, back to you, Adrian. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, I digress. Yeah. yeah. You had that right. <laughs> All right. So in order to make it go game to game seven, though, a couple of uh, unpleasant things happened in this game to, mm -hmm. to, to lead yeah. us to that. I want to start off with that Scott Mayfield hit on, on Nikita Kucherov. First period, first shift on the ice for Kucherov. Star player in the playoffs, just an anchor for Tampa Bay. And Scott Mayfield takes him out of the game. Mayfield ironically goes on to be the one who to score the equalizer in the third yeah. period to send it to overtime. Yeah. What are your thoughts there, Paul? Well, um, you know my feelings on on the dirty play and the poor referee in this year. I'm I, I think they're really dropping the ball on this, and I think the NHL needs to sit down with the board of governors and the PA and figure this out. Uh, again, my catchphrase: figure it out. These guys want to go around and hammer each other. This is their livelihood. This is how they make their living and yet they go out there and try and kill each other with cheap stuff all day long. Um, the repercussions long term are immense and we won't see these things for like 20 years down the road. Um, I get Mayfield has to play that type of game. He's a big guy, six foot five, 220, uh, but I didn't realize he's as dirty as he is. <laughs> I had never watched him all that closely, but he is dirty and the stuff with the the stick pulling their helmets off. Uh, the NHL's got to stop that. That being said, I was happy to see him score because it helped keep my prediction alive, but I don't condone his type of play. <laughs> A little self-serving there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Anthony Beauvillier. What else, what else uh, we got? Final goal on the... <laughs> A final goal in the the Coleman error and turnover uh, to uh, to give the game uh, to in overtime. Uh, you know Coleman turned it over to you know to Beauvillier and uh, he just made no mistake about it all. What are your thoughts, yeah, on him, Paul? Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, Blake Coleman must have forgot that he was playing for the Tampa Bay Lightning and he reverted back to playing for the New Jersey Devils. So maybe that he just had a little relapse or something like that. Uh, he's a good player. It was a, it was a mistake. I don't see why these guys want to go across the across the ice in front of their net as much as they do, though. Almost everybody does it multiple times a game. Uh, you get taught as a little kid not to not to make dangerous passes in front of your net, and yet when you get to that level, well, let's do this. Let's put it in front of the net and see what happens. And invariably, somebody gets caught. Every few games, somebody gets caught doing that. Yeah. Anthony Beauvillier, the kid was a uh, two-time 40-goal scorer in junior he was fantastic at the U18s when I saw him. I remember at the draft in 2015, I was watching, uh, everybody should know by now, I am a Montreal Canadiens fan. So I was watching who Montreal was taking. 
and uh, they took Noah Juleson. And I thought, oh, great. Another Western Hockey League defenseman. That seems to be the calling card of the Montreal Canadiens. And uh, two picks later, Anthony Beauvillier went to the Islanders, so they stole one. Ironically, in that draft, too, uh, Sebastian Ajo went at 35, so I, I guess both teams missed on, on that player. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's revisionist uh, history. What could have been uh, isn't. Beauvillier is, has talent, has always had some talent, and is a nice little hockey player for sure. Well, he's not little, but you know what I mean. Well, he certainly made it happen at the at the right moment yes. <laughs> in this game. So, yeah, uh, for sure. And cel- celebrating the end of the game with beer cans. I mean, and this is something the NBC commentators did uh, have trouble with. You know, what the heck were, were were New York fans doing, pelting their own players or their own ice? You know, with the players on it. So, you know, with with beer cans after winning in overtime. No, no idea. That must be a New York thing or an island thing. Who knows? Yeah, it is. Uh, they are. They were fairly raucous tonight. They, they were. They were rocking pretty good. So, that that place, uh, the the Nassau County Coliseum, is quite a quite a place. Um, and the fans there are uh, um, very serious about it. <laughs> well, I I. I... I don't know as a player whether I would prefer being, you know, hit by a, a beer can and, and <laughs> somebody else's yeah, uh, probably not probably somebody nothing, else's right? stale beer or, or whether I'd want the Detroit octopus shower to be. Hitting me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You get a wet tentacle across the face. That might be a little bit more gross. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Maybe if they get hit with some beer coming by, they're going to think it's part of the celebrations for the Stanley Cup and they're starting early. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this brings us to predictions for Game Seven. So last night, uh, you gave uh, no. Your hold on, before first. We, we get to pro- oh, no, no. Yeah. Before we get to predictions, how about we have a, a call out of how good Matty Barzal was tonight? He was Go everywhere. Ahead. He finally, uh, he f- finally is starting to be recognized. Well, the Islanders fans knew it, but he was a dominant force tonight. And the other side of the coin to that was how good the Tampa Bay Lightning defense was to keep him to the outside and not let him get good opportunities. There was one point there where he had the puck for about 35, 40 seconds, and, and he couldn't get get anything done just because the the Lightning were so tight. So the Lightning were, uh, were good, but uh, like I said, they shouldn't have run up the score the other night. Anyway, let's make our prediction. Sorry, I, I digress. I'm All right. Again. So the other night, uh, or last night, uh, we had you give prediction first. So, so I'll, I'll go first uh, tonight. And uh, the uh, I, I got to say, you know, this game, I think, you know, as we talked about a couple nights ago, this game, I think, was the, the return on, you know, New York having been humiliated and they had to come back. And, you know, I said it last time that they were not going to allow themselves, you know, come hell or high water. You know, going to the golf course, you know, under the humiliation that they sustained a couple nights ago, they weren't going to let that happen again. They didn't let that happen again, and they they made their point tonight. But I do think that Tampa Bay is the stronger team. I think, you know, it's not necessarily, it's not not me expressing a preference. I think this is just, I think this is the, the fact of the matter is that there's more depth, there's more strength overall on Tampa Bay, and I think that the, the hockey gods will realign themselves um, and the the inspiration last game, the inspiration was on New York's side from from having been humiliated. This game, I think the uh, the inspiration is going to be on Tampa's side because of uh, the Kucherov inst- incident, and I think they're going to have that the inspiration, especially if Kucherov's not back in the game uh, for next time. I think the the rest of the team is going to take the inspiration uh, from the anger of him being put out by Mayfield. And um, they're going to close it out in seven, five goals to one, five to one final score in the seventh game for Tampa Bay. Okay. So normally I would just take the contrarian view and, and say the New York Islanders. I don't think they have the horses. Uh, they are a good team. They are a, an amazingly well-coached team and an amazingly well-run team. Thank you, Lou Lamorello, Jim Gregory, GM of, of the Year Award winner. Take that, Leaf fans. Uh, but they don't have enough roster strength to to battle with with Tampa. 
think Tampa's too deep. I watched them tonight. They just tightened everything up down, down the middle. Uh, well, inwardly, I'm probably cheering for the Islanders to win just so we have a new Stanley Cup champion. I like it when somebody else wins. But I think Tampa will, will take this uh, and goes to the final. I think it'll be tighter, though. I think it'll be a, probably a 2-1 game. Um, and let's say something ludicrous like Blake Coleman scores the winner. All right. So uh, you heard so it So there you have it. We both uh, think Tampa. Both, both puck dudes predicting Tampa Bay to, to take the series in game seven. So let's uh, see what happens in a couple nights. All right, well, thank you, everyone, for watching. And again, uh, shout out to all of our new subscribers. Uh, great to have you on the channel and uh, look forward to, uh, to seeing you more in the future. So uh, thanks, Paul. And um, again, uh, just a reminder, as, as always, that uh, uh, we'll put a link to our website in the description of the video below. And we, you know, feel free to come on over and check out the great hockey content on the site uh, if you'd like to. All right, thanks a lot for watching. And, and we night. love the comments. And we love the fact that Adrian sounds like a cartoon surfer dude. <laughs> Have a good night, guys.